Hi, welcome to another one of my video lessons. My name's Jeff Chalmers and I run a website called discoverdoublebass.com. So if you want to learn more about the double bass, go and check that out. And I also have a full length step-by-step -step video course uh, teaching how to create walking bass lines. So you can learn more about that by following the links below this video. Today we're talking about some really classic patterns, uh, classic walking bass riffs, whatever you want to call them, that you'll hear in jazz. I'm going to be teaching you um, these riffs, these patterns over Fly Me to the Moon and the chord sequence for that. So it's one of those swing pieces that you've heard a thousand times and having these patterns will help you play this music and sound really convincing and I found a few little things about these patterns that relate to each other that will help you use them over more chord types and I think really, you know, really help you go and get what you're hearing in your ear into your muscle memory and out on the bass. Well, that's the plan, so let's get into it and see if it works. The walking bass line pattern that I'm talking about today can be used when you're moving from one chord up a fourth. Now this chord could be a minor chord, a dominant seventh chord, or a major chord. So they're the three main chord types. The same pattern will work for each one of those. This m chord movement of moving up a fourth or down a fifth, it's the same thing, is the most common mu movement between two chord types. So if you can get some great walking bass lines under your fingers, it will mean that you can process these a lot quicker when you're on your gig. So let's have a look how this works over Fly Me To The Moon. First, two chords are minor chords. It's an A minor seven to a D minor seven. And this is the pattern I'd like you to learn. Okay, so the first chord, A minor, we play root, second, minor, third, and then we play C sharp, and that leads us up to the note D. Now, why can't we just play at the scale? There's a really good reason. You'll end up on the next chord a beat early. A, B, C, the next chord of the scale is D, but if you play that on beat four of the first bar, it'll sound like you've suddenly arrived early, and this will keep happening no matter what the chord type, whether it's dominant seven or major or whatever. So we've got to put an extra note in the pattern. Now, the pattern works exactly the same way over this next chord. It's D minor 7. The F sharp is now leading us up to G dominant 7, which is leading us up to C major 7. Now let's just pause for a moment. The G7, root 2nd, minor to major 3rd, which is a really effective note choice on dominant seventh chords that you hear that a lot so the pattern works for dominant seventh chords now how about um c uh, major or c dominant seven depending on uh exactly what version you're playing of this but essentially if, let's call it c7 c7 moving to uh f major seven and works perfectly now at this stage um of the progression, it takes a little bit of a side step up to uh, the note B minor seven flat five, the chord B minor seven flat five. But if we were using, if it was still moving up and forth, it would still work perfectly. We could go from F to B flat, and it would work great. So this pattern is really effective, and all you need to remember is root major second, and then you'll lead up chromatically to the next chord. It's a lot easier than thinking of this really, you know, a more complex pattern note by note. You've really just got to remember the first two. Let me show you a really good one for B minor seven flat five, and for the more advanced players, this will also work over altered chords as well. So if we have an E altered chord next, that would work well. So B minor seven flat five, you have to play a a minor second, not a major second, to match the chord type. So it's B, C, D, D sharp, and that takes you to the next chord. So if you are playing, let's have a look at the 2-5-1 in Autumn Leaves that you hear. A minor 7 flat 5, A, B flat, C natural, C sharp, up to D. And if you're playing D altered, it would be D, E flat, F, F sharp, and then G. So the pattern there is root, minor second, and then you play the minor third, and then you play the major third. And that's for altered and minor seven flat five chords. Now, it might be that you're a little bit baffled about what those chord types are. If so, put them to one side. Um, the main thing is, is you get this key pattern that you can use for minor seven, major seven, dominant seventh chords, because they're everywhere. 
And what I'm going to do now is show you another pattern that you can add in to contrast, to add, add contrast, so you don't continually keep ascending and run out of notes to play. You need a pattern to bring you back down. And luckily, there's a really simple one, which is to move down the scale. So when we move backwards down a scale, we actually have enough notes in the scale to take us down a, um, a fifth or up a fourth, however you want to be thinking of it, to take you to the next chord without having to add in extra any chromatic notes. That's the first three bars. In fact, let's start on an A. Um, and then we can move down and see if it works. So let's just start on this A. And we've really clearly outlined the harmony there of the chords just by moving down the scale. And if you're a little bit unsure about the individual scales, this piece is in the key of C major, so or A minor, whichever you prefer to think about it, and that means no sharps or flats, so that could be a little shortcut to help you there. And what starts to get really effective is if you mix the two approaches. So I'll give you an example about, of how that would sound. Let's keep going up. back up again. There's a little bit of a change in the chord sequence there. Up, down, let's keep going down. You've got an absolutely huge range of options and you're really using one approach which is to use these patterns. Um, I found it a really helpful process, especially in terms of adding cool sounding repertoire, cool bass patterns that you can use and getting them into your muscle memory so you can move through different chord sequences. And when the tempo picks up, it's especially helpful. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I think it's a really useful approach, but it's one of a huge range that we can take when we're learning walking bass lines. If you want to learn everything that I know about creating walking bass lines, check out my full length course, which takes you from the real beginnings to some very advanced material. So you can learn more about that by following the link below. And if you've enjoyed the lesson, you can uh, click that like button on YouTube to let me know. Keep practicing hard and I'll see you next time.